Jeffree Star Cosmetics is actually Jeffree Star's second attempt at the brand because his first is a lot darker than you'd think. Some of the stuff in here is so bad, I may have to just completely censor it in order to put this on YouTube. He was lying, and I have proof that he was lying. All right, hi fairies. So in today's video, we're gonna be doing something a little bit different than what I normally do. So today's video, we're gonna be talking about Jeffree Star. Put your seatbelts on. Because there's this intense social kind of discourse or social discussion about Jeffree going on right now, and it does involve some very serious issues. When I was planning this, I didn't really want it to be a drama video. You know, I'm not here to tell you all my opinions. I'm not here to tell you all that. I am done with the tea. I'm here to present you with all the things I found while doing basically a search across almost like the entire history of the internet pretty much you know i went into this kind of research and this journey per se as a person who kind of really did like jeffree star you know i have pretty much almost every single one of his products to say that i'm a jeffree star hater is that's not entirely true however that was me going into this going into researching and as i'm leaving this kind of research phase as i'm ready to share my findings with you i'm honestly really disgusted and disappointed with what i found your behavior is unacceptable not because it's nothing but because it's something because i know a lot of drama videos and a lot of people are quick to call out, you know, the Jeffree Star stands here. If you're here, just leave the dislike and go. You know, I really want to sit down here and chat with you because I used to be behind those words before I knew all of the stuff I'm about to share with you. I reached the conclusion that a lot of people, including myself, like everything about Jeffree Star except Jeffree Star. She's got a point. Some of the stuff in here is so bad, I may have to just completely censor it in order to put this on YouTube. But anyways, I'm going to be doing my makeup while I explain everything to you just because it helps me think. I'm not going to be focusing on the makeup at all. I'm not even probably going to tell you what I'm using because, bitch, once I get into it, I get into it. Yeah, get into it. So the first thing I want to talk to you about is this. Hey. How's it going? Not Jeffree Star Cosmetics, what actually came before. Jeffree Star Cosmetics is actually Jeffree Star's second attempt at the brand because his first is a lot darker than you'd think. Jeffree Star's first attempt at a makeup brand is called Lipstick Nazi. Wait a damn minute. It was a not themed range of makeup. Now it is unclear whether or not it was going to be lipstick or eyeshadow or even makeup, but it was definitely going to be a product of some sort because there are a few like coming soon style ad campaign kind of photo shoots. That was literally my shade like yesterday. Okay. Basically on Twitter, someone made a thread about this and some of the people in the comments were quick to say that that was not actually in fact Jeffree Star. It was his doppelganger named Yuki Demon. And people said this was Yuki because Yuki Demon released a song in 2012 or 2011 called Lip it's an understandable confusion. However, it's actually false. This is actually Jeffree Star. I know this because when you go on internetarchive.com, the earliest appearance of lipsticknot.com dates back to March 9th, 2004. Now, I'm going to be talking about Internet Archive a lot in this video, so I just want to tell you what it is. It's basically a website where you can save uh, basically like the HTML code or certain files that a website was. You can basically turn back the internet. I have a time machine. And on that 2004 version, of lipsticknot.com. It's a really simple page. It just says Jeffree Star, Hollywood's biggest threat. We got you. And just to be fully thorough, I went to a few other versions of this website. This is in fact Jeffree Star's website because the May 8th, 2004 version of this website has a disclaimer at the bottom of the screen that says all site contents are copyright of J Star 2001 to 2004. Now that's not even the icing on the scumbag cake here Ooh. because when you go to the version of Lipsticknot from April 3rd, 2005, you are greeted with the first Yes. Get the fuck out of my room! You are greeted with the first ad campaign for this brand that never was. So the first ad campaign for lipsticknot.com is basically Jeffree Star sitting on a couch, huge self-inflicted cut on his arm. And the logo of lipsticknot appears to be what is a inverted schwarzka. What, what was the reason? I what was the reason? I'm not going to censor the schwarzka because it's inverted, so technically it already is censored. There is so much wrong with this, and it's not just the surface layer stuff. But first, someone like Jeffree Star, who did have a history of self-harm that he shared with us, that huge moment of vulnerability from the Shane Dawson series. From someone that has gone through that and experienced that, seeing this kind of thing that is basically mocking self-harm and literally glamorizing it because this is a beauty ad after all, he shared that moment of vulnerability with us in the Shane Dawson series, and it caused a lot of people to 
to almost have empathy, sympathy and understanding towards him. This kind of mockery of that coming from a person that has went through it is beyond disgraceful and in my opinion, even worse. Because that moment from the Shane Dawson series, I don't wanna say humanized Jeffree Star, but it caused a lot of people to understand where he was coming from. Seeing this image completely undid everything the Shane Dawson series did for Jeffree to me. That subject in the Shane Dawson series was treated very seriously as it should. I think we can agree regardless, even if it was different times, I think we can agree that this stuff has always been a very serious topic. That extremely sensitive and vulnerable moment he shared with us in the series is completely undone by the fact that he was mocking it for a naughty themed makeup line years prior. It's harmful, dangerous, gross, disgusting, and should never be promoted. And as period. Every time I see this logo now, I'm gonna think this is lipstick, not volume two. Now, I'm not a person that believes in throwing away makeup. You know, I don't think you should throw away makeup. I think it's extremely wasteful and honestly kind of stupid. Ooh. Just use the damn product, but next time when you're buying, just be more mindful. Americans have known not these are bad for how long? 70 years. When was World War II again? It's been 84 years. While I was researching this, I actually found someone on Reddit that said they actually commented under one of Jeffrey's Twitter posts about this, and he just straight up block them. Girl, you have done it again. Constant lowering the bar for us all. In fact, someone on Reddit even made a list of excuses, possible excuses people can use and how to invalidate them. Anyways, if you support him, other people are gonna ask why, and that's perfectly normal, because realistically, there are so many reasons not to like him at this point. Oh, girl, he's knocking at my door. Don't try me. Kill yourself, faggot. Like I was saying, because who you support publicly is very important. After all, Jeffrey's in the predicament he is now because he supported the wrong person. She's got a point. Okay, so I'm gonna do eyeshadow now, and the palette I choose to do eyeshadow is the Lunar Beauty Strawberry Dreams. This is Manny MUA's brand, and I chose this on purpose. I won't dwell on this too long because there is something I really wanna move on to. Like, I haven't even gotten into like the main point of this video, girl. What did Manny MUA actually do? Now, I don't really watch him. Honestly, did he deserve what happened to him? Like, what did Manny MUA actually do besides just make Jeffree Star cry. <laughs> and I know the thing with Laura Lee is she got exposed, but honestly, didn't Jeffree do the same thing? out loud in real life. Shut up, you fucking bitch. And people are so quick to forgive that, yet attack someone else and basically end their career on the grounds of that. Why is something Jeffree Star does okay, but when someone else does it, all of a sudden their career's over? I'll tell you why. Because it was never okay. People just find ways and excuses to excuse Jeffree Star. All right, so now let's jump into a different point. So this is something I randomly stumbled upon while I was on Internet Archive, and I think I found gold. This is one of Jeffree Star's old blogs. What is this, honey? The tea is exceptionally good today. Ooh. This is his personal vlog he made in 2004 and it is no longer accessible on uh, the reachable parts of the internet. You have to turn back time using the internet archive. Now, this blog was made during 2004, so Jeffree Star was 20 at the time, and it is on a website called Melodramatic. It's basically almost kind of like an online diary. It's like a very primitive social media where you can upload like pictures and shit. So I found this on the first version of Lipstick Now on Internet Archive, so if you want to find it, go to the version saved on March 9th, 2004, and you're greeted with a pretty much blank page that just says Jeffree Star, Hollywood's biggest threat, and there is what appears, what appears to be a broken image file at the top. Click on it. You will be redirected to Jeffree Star's melodramatic account under the username cunt. This is how I press it. <laughs> Now, I don't really think anyone else has found this because, like I said, the username is cunt and Jeffree Star's name is not really mentioned at all anywhere on the profile except for the basic account information. I'd say maybe like 90 to 80% of all the images just aren't there anymore, but some of them are. It's extremely strange. I read through almost every single version and you guys, there is some, there is some pretty disturbing things written in that blog. Why don't we all take a look? Literally almost every post, the caption suggests it would have been a picture depicting self-harm, which is, that, that's never good to upload that stuff to the Internet, but thank goodness it's not there anymore. I have some of the posts printed out and I want to read some things to you. The reason why I want to read them to you is not just like be like, ooh, tea. I am done with the tea. But I feel like this uncovers a lot of lies he's been telling us in recent times. It was Not lies relevant to the Davi vanity situation, because I'll talk about that at the end. 
but lies that he's just been telling us over the years. And until now, this website that basically disappeared, but kind of didn't. There are literally pictures that would suggest otherwise. For example, Jeffree Star is known to publicly deny ever using drugs or alcohol. Pretty much every drug except cannabis. However, about the alcohol, watch this. Watch this. Never tried alcohol before. I know that's gonna seem shocking to some people. I think I've never sipped a beer, never tried wine. Not into drugs, not into alcohol. Yeah, which people don't believe. I've never tried a beer, never tried alcohol before. What? Never tried wine. I don't drink alcohol, I don't get wasted. My family comes from a long line of addicts, so I chose to never drink at a really young age. I've stuck to it, I don't see the point in it now. I have never tried alcohol before. I know that's gonna seem shocking to some people. I've stuck to it, I don't see the point in it now. Never tried wine. Not drinking is something that I am proud of. I don't party, and what I mean by partying is, you guys, is I don't drink alcohol, I don't get wasted. I have never tried alcohol before. My family comes from a long line of addicts. Not drinking is something that I am proud of. So there's the lie about alcohol, but there is actually a lie about drugs as well. Let's read together some of the passages from his blog. April 22nd, 2004. I swallowed a million pills and it wasn't a good idea. I walked around in a daze and it's like the opposite of the drugs because these drugs are supposed to make you feel good, but these ones only make me feel like shit. I walked around the mall and suddenly started hitting myself in the head because I thought I could bash away the feelings. Everyone in the mall was looking at me. April 19th, 2004. Tomorrow I know there will be haunting compulsions to carry my needle and spoon in a Louis Vuitton handbag. Needle and spoon. I wonder what that's for. Drugs. And finally, and probably the most damning piece of evidence, is a photo. One of the last photos that remains up on the blog. It is a photo of Jeffree Star, what looks like he's passed out on the floor. And the caption is, meth speed sleep. Not into drugs, not into alcohol. You've never done drugs or drinking or anything? Just smoked weed, I've never tried coke, ecstasy, nothing. Lies, lies, and more lies. The drugs and alcohol thing is something extremely weird to lie about. You know, because number one, I'm pretty sure everyone has tried alcohol before in their lives. And the drug thing is extremely strange to deny because given Jeffree Star's behavior, it wouldn't surprise me if he denied or lied about something that was damaging to him, like PR wise. But one's experience with drug abuse is not really something people can use against you. So the fact that he's lying about that, something so unnecessary is extremely strange. And I'm bringing this up because as soon as I saw these things, I thought to myself, how much of Jeffree Star do we actually know how much of his past is hidden and he knows it's hidden so he knows he can lie about it apparently not so hidden if you ask me <laughs> Do we actually know the real Jeffree Star or do we know this fabricated persona he's created to portray this image of perfection? I know that sounds a little bit far-fetched and maybe a little bit too manipulative for him to be, but just listen to this next passage and think about it. April 19th, 2004. The internet wasn't new to me. I started my reign of popularity contest on the website facethejury.com where I dominated everyone and manipulated the whole website. I started my reign of popularity and manipulated the whole website. Manipulated the whole website. Hmm. Hmm. Sounds a little bit familiar, but I can't really put my finger on it. I'd encourage you guys to read through these blog posts if you have the stomach to handle it because there is some pretty nasty stuff in here. It is extremely obvious that these entries, these passages, were not written by a mentally well person. I don't think anyone in their right mind would talk about this stuff on the internet, especially in this kind of graphic detail. I had a best friend once. Her name was Lily. We were twins, best friends forever. She started cutting my name into her body. She made life out of my art. It was so special. So I started to post those pictures of her wrist gaping open with the word Jeffrey carved over all over her arm 40 times. And then later on in that same passage, all of a sudden it was just too much. So much hate mail and virus sending. I took down all of the pictures and hid them. I still have all of them saved on a disc, waiting for the right moment to put them in my future book. That's kind of crazy to think that this is Jeffree Star writing this stuff. Talking about a girl carving his name into her arm and having to take it down because of so much hate mail. It's what she deserves. But then being spiteful and resentful enough to publicly say, oh, I'm gonna post it in a future book. That is beyond sick, disgusting, and twisted, but I'm gonna pop on some lashes. Hold on. Hold that thought. I just realized I didn't
gonna do my bronzer blush or highlight and there are also some things on here that you can look for yourself I didn't want to just like have this video be a, just a collection of everything controversial on this blog But there are a few things on here that a lot of the excuses people use to excuse his past racist behavior A lot of people use the excuse that that was a dark time or whatever some shit like that But there's literally a blog post entitled Ku Klux hair behind whitened teeth I'm bringing that up because there is no way to really excuse that <laughs> uh, Yeah, I don't know if it's just me but when I'm going through a dark time I definitely don't uh, say my hair looks like the Ku Klux or attempt to release a not pink makeup brand. Come on, come on. Now come on now. That excuse that has been working for so long is actually not gonna cover a lot of his behavior. And what's crazy is he has still not apologized or acknowledged any of this stuff. Is that all the excuses he gave and all everything he said with his own mouth, you know, I was going through a difficult time, this, this, and this. The few things from Jeffree Star's past we all took seriously, turns out he was actually mocking them while they were happening. You know, literally when I saw this stuff, it sent chills down my spine because in that moment, I immediately recognized how deep the hypocrisy is here. You want to use what you were going through all those years ago as an excuse for the things you did. And in my opinion, there is no excuse for the things he did. Just ways to kind of alleviate how bad it was. God, you stupid ape, I'm gonna spray you. Will you beat that dick? But you want to use all those things as excuses. But you find things like this, and it turns out he was actually mocking them and glamorizing it to self not themed makeup. The last thing I want to talk about from his old blog, the post made on April 19th, 2004. I know you wanted it, but I haven't ruined myself. Just changed like I always have. Before all those other videos he had to answer for. Before all that even happened, I'm changing like I always have. The old Jeffrey is never coming back, so keep rewatching the old her. I'm never coming back, sweetie. Oh, baby. Are you guys beginning to see a pattern here? He was using the same excuses back in 2004 for shit he didn't even do yet. Once again, within the same post made on April 19th, I manipulated the whole website and began my reign of popularity. By the way, I'm gonna use the Bretman Rock highlighter, a guru worth our time. So I wanted to talk about Jeffree Star's recent interviews in this video because that is kind of why he's on the hot seat per se. I'm assuming as most of you already know, there is a situation involving Jeffree being friends with a child predator, AKA Davi Van. Now, this is a really ugly and horrible, twisted situation, girl. This ain't even drama. Like, the FBI is investigating this shit. Davi Vanity was a, like, emo rocker bitch, I guess, who was kind of friends or worked with Jeffree Star at one point. You know, Jeffree Star was around Davi a lot, and basically what's been happening recently is tens, maybe even hundreds of girls have been coming forth. They're interviewing Jeffree Star to try and get this man in jail. And guess where he going? To prison! As they motherfucking should. But basically, Jeffree Star did a recent interview with Chris Henson, the How to Catch a Predator guy. Generally, people are not satisfied with what Jeffree said. So Jeffree Star was actually one of the first people to call Davi out publicly. He made a post on Twitter attempting to expose Davi for what he witnessed, you know, which is good, that's iconic. Only to later retract that statement by deleting the tweets and calling Davi his brother when it was time to work with him again for another album. So that has a lot of people pissed off, rightfully so. Jeffree Star is kind of the Donald Trump of the beauty community. I say that because him and his base use the same strategy anytime they're under fire. Attack, invalidate, and mitigate. You know, attack means to have an inflamed, harsh reaction. Invalidate means try and invalidate that person's credibility, not their statement in any way you can. Sometimes I feel like people do that stuff on purpose. Like, let me use Jeffrey's thing and then he'll like, cause a stir about it and I'll get a lot more views and subscribers. Dragging up old videos and trying to paint a narrative? Girl! Go spend some quarantine time doing something else for you, girl. Cause all that energy on me is wasteful. So basically what he said there is, if you don't accept the information I'm spoon feeding you, if you look for information about me yourself, that makes you the bad guy, even though I'm asking for unquestioned loyalty. You can see this anytime Jeffree Star has a problem with someone. The first thing he's always gonna say is, they want clout, they want money, they're jealous, they're this, they're this, they're this, they're this, and try and use anything he can against an individual to distract from their original rhetoric or accusation. That's called the two quote fallacy. It's basically along the lines of, I might have a drinking problem, but you smoke a lot. You can see how that is very tricky and it actually distracts from what you're really talking about. And then the final step is mitigate. Act as if it never happened. But stop trying to use my past against me. Me 10 years ago, We've are, we've been over this so many times, so every time, I'm not gonna readdress things. Basically carry on, forget it happened, and learn nothing. I wanna let you guys know something. I'm done. I am done with the tea. Two very boring minutes later. And for some reason, James thinks that me and Shane tried to ruin his life and orchestrated the whole thing. I am done. <laughs> Hold on, let me 
put this on, babe. All right, so that's basically it for the makeup, but I'm gonna keep talking. You know, that strategy in rhetoric, it's literally been used in almost every single scandal. For example, his interview with Keemstar he did recently. You do have a testimony from an alleged victim in your possession. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, he does. That's what he said. Right. But listen, Jeffrey, Jeffrey, Call look, my lawyer. I'm telling you, Call my lawyer. I did and uploaded a 40 minute video about him and she should have never uploaded that. The two quote quay fallacy where you're distracting from what people are talking about by blaming someone else or blaming the accuser. <laughs> Jeffree Star will literally throw anyone under the bus to avoid having to say sorry or answer for shit he's done. Cause how nonsensical is that response? Does he really think we weren't watching Drama Get in 3 unfold? Like all Tati did is basically say James is annoying and talks about dick too much in my Christian household. That's literally all she did. Sucking dick and cock. But then Jeffrey was the one that came forward and said, oh, you're a predator, you're this, so and so's gonna come on camera and expose you for doing all this. So yes, Tati did make the first video, but if anyone escalated it to what it was, it it's Jeffrey. And the fact that Jeffrey didn't even answer that question or remotely show any remorse for what he did, it's not only disappointing in him, but it also makes me feel disappointed in myself. Because as someone that trusted him when he said he had all these receipts, all this proof, all this allegation, no, he said he had that proof. Sorry, I'm gonna vomit. He said he had that proof. He said he had those things. And a lot of people, including myself, trusted him and gave him the benefit of the doubt. But that was a big mistake and I regret ever trusting him. You know, a lot of people like myself really thought we were doing the right thing by trusting him, only to find out with that lame ass apology video and the podcast that he did actually didn't have proof even to begin with. The truth is, is that someone, and right now, I legally can't say who. I mean, you literally can because you witnessed a crime. And we trusted that person's opinion and I don't know if they're true or not. Jeffree Star is willing to betray you and make you look foolish for supporting him. He just wants you to fight his battles as a pawn. He doesn't care about you. And I'm not the biggest James Charles fan. In fact, I don't really even like him that much either. But honestly, him and everyone else involved in that situation are acting in the best possible way, acting like normal, sensible people. Your behavior. Come on, acceptable. Do you see James going on podcast talking about this shit? No. Do you see Tati going on podcast talking about this shit? No. But do you see Jeffrey, the exact same person who claims, I have my money, I have my brand, I have my car, I'm so over this. Think we care to drag or ruin someone? For what? We're our own superstars. We're really? Because he's the only person going on podcast and talking about this shit. Period! The fuck? And it's so funny because it's honestly making him look worse by talking more about it. The worst thing you can let Jeffree Star do is just talk unfiltered. She's got a point. Because the truth is in there somewhere and it will come out, which is exactly what happened in his Chris Henson interview. Well, the truth didn't come out, but the suspicion that he's hiding the truth did. People say Jeffrey's not the one on trial. He's not the one that has to answer all these questions. However, what's happening right now is Jeffrey Star's responses in that interview, even though they were meant to clarify and alleviate, have actually caused people to conspire and actually doubt he's telling the truth. Now, by me talking about this, am I in no way trying to divert any attention away from the victims. In fact, I'm gonna put some of their statements in here for a second because, because some shit is going on and I have proof directly from a victim. For the first part, the entire interview was basically just Jeffrey talking about how much he's changed and him trying to separate himself from that situation even though he was extremely close to it. But the part that got a lot of people pissed off is Jeffree Star basically saying, I didn't witness anything. That's what a lot of people don't understand is that I don't have anything to report. If I actually saw and witnessed something, he would be rotting in jail this very moment. I don't have anything to report. If I actually saw and witnessed something. Sure, Jan. By doing that, he is severing himself from this situation. You can see why something like that would be beneficial when you have a reputation to protect. However, he was lying in that interview and I have proof that he was lying. Meet Damien Lionheart. They were one of Davi's previous victims. They did an interview about this whole topic and this is what they had to say about Miss Jeffrey Lynn. Jeffrey Starr. Um, mm -hmm where you talked about how both he and Jay knew the relationship between you and Dobby and actually witnessed him uh, kissing. Yeah, they witnessed many girls kissing him. I wasn't the only one. Dobby was very affectionate with a lot of his fans and he was fucking a lot of them. It was normal in the scene to be kind of like lovey and touchy and stuff, but like Dobby took it quite a bit far with quite a few very young fans and Jeffree Star and Jay witnessed it. Jeffree Star and Jay witnessed it. It blows my mind 
the ability to sit back and go, I didn't know anything, when there is video proof of you being there watching a girl being sexually assaulted. So we are in a very unique predicament here. We have Jeffrey, who says he didn't see anything, but also called the person being accused his brother, as well as has a multi-million dollar company to protect and reputation to protect. And we also have the victim, who says Jeffrey did see something and all they wants is justice. We have to trust the victim here, you guys. Jeffrey Star knows something. Two possible things could explain Jeffree Star's actions. He's either lying or he's covering for Dobby. So this time, if you make the same mistake I did where you trust him and give him the benefit of the doubt and have faith in him, it very might well blow up in your face. Do you really want your name on the wrong side this time because you gave the benefit of the doubt to the wrong person? And allegedly, there's video proof of him doing the same thing to underage boys. Oh, this video where he's grinding? That was just something we did. Yeah, I know, Jeffrey, that's something you did because I received video of you doing it to um, underage boys. Oh, and the thing that makes this so serious is this Davi person is still doing this. He is still out there ruining girls' lives. This is his account, by the way, so go ahead and leave some hate comments for me and tell him I sent you. And I know no one has a completely clean slate, no one has a completely clean record, whatever. But the thing is, when you are the face of an entire community, the makeup community, the LGBT community, there is a higher standard you must abide by. Because on this platform, there is so much love talent a lot to handle all at once. and kindness yeah, you can open it. that do we really want a person like this being the face of our community no, and i think with that this video is coming to a close i really hope you enjoyed and i hope you stay safe above all please be respectful in the comments i know it's gonna be gonna be messier than peach's pubes down there Ooh. but please so thank you so much for listening and i hope you learned something new bye we